Let's go to the former Labor Secretary of the United States, what he makes of this latest report. Eugene Scalia, uh, Labor Secretary under President Trump. Uh, Secretary, always good to have you. Um, I, was, I was trying to describe this report today uh, as a Goldilocks, maybe, type report. Not too strong, not too weak. Maybe, at least for the markets today, and we still have a few hours to go, maybe just right. What do you make of that? I think that's probably right, Neil. I think that's uh, it's look, this is a good jobs report. Whenever I could step out as labor secretary and say we've added 315,000 jobs to the economy, that's a that's a really good number. It's not as high as some we've seen. It's still high. Um, and as you know, as Connell said, yes, uh, unemployment tick, ticked up to uh, 3.7. But uh, what I thought was pretty heartening in this report was that labor force participation uh, went up, uh, you know, 0.3 percent, which is a good move relative to what we've uh, seen over the last few months or more. I mean, that's been one of the concerns coming out of the uh, pandemic economy and really going, going even farther than that, which is that we still have too many people on the sidelines and that didn't seem to be budging. That's now budged some. About 790,000 more people came into the workforce. Uh, and so I think what we're seeing, Neil, is that we're still getting job gains from coming out of the pandemic economy. We still have jobs to add, uh, but we didn't in this report, I think, see any serious recessionary impacts either. So you want to call that Goldilocks? Uh, you know, that, that's fine. I uh, would also point out, as you know, um, another important report that came out recently is the job openings report. We still have 11.2 million job openings, yeah. uh, while we only have about 6 million people who say they're unemployed. So. Uh, there is still, uh, you know, a hot job market out there, and we'll continue to watch the impact on wages and therefore on inflation. Yeah, and Secretary, I don't want to go too far with the Goldilocks analogy because everyone should remember that she was in a house dominated by bears. That's a whole separate story. But let me get your take on, on how this is digested because we got some factory orders news that is weakening. We've also got some sentiment numbers that show Americans might retrench. Um, you know, obviously, depending on the retailer, some are doing fine in this environment, others not so much. So there's some reticence, uh, you know, popping up here and there. Uh, does that worry you, this argument that um, this is good, but it, it's not going to stay this way? Well, I, I think that's a, a fair way to look at it. You know, when I talk to executives and talk to my clients and as they look down the road, uh, among their concerns are the regulatory environment. Uh, you know, as you know, Neil, from our prior discussions, I thought that one of the reasons uh, during the Trump years that the job market was just so incredibly good was that the president was loosening the burdens on the economy. We're at a phase now uh, where President Biden is increasing uh, regulatory burdens. You look at what the Securities and Exchange Commission is doing. You look at the Federal Trade Commission. The Labor Department is looking at a rule to make it harder for companies to use independent contractors. I know that those kinds of regulatory costs and hiring costs are on the mind of executives as they look down the road uh, as well. Secretary, if I could just veer a little bit about, about your dad, uh, the, the late great uh, justice of the Supreme Court, Antonin Scalia, and what you think your dad would make, first of all, on the Roe v. Wade reversal, uh, but more importantly, the reaction to it and how it has galvanized certainly some Democrats in key races. What do you think he would think? Well, you know, I think that uh, this Supreme Court term, Neil, uh, it was certainly an important term. Uh, and I, I think it did reflect to a significant extent uh, the work that my father had done over decades, which was to promote uh, an interpretation of the Constitution based on um, what he would call its original meaning, uh, rather than on uh, people's policy ideas. Uh, on what the constitutional rights should be, and also uh, an interpretive method that he called textualism, focusing on the text of the Constitution and uh, of statutes. And I think that this term is one where, uh, by and large, uh, that methodology uh, had the upper hand. He did not like Roe v. Wade. He thought it was a, a terrible decision, and I think would have been pleased to see it, uh, it uh, overruled as it was. In terms of the uh, public reaction, uh, you know, let me say, first of all, um, I think it's very, very distressing to live in an environment where our judges are threatened, uh, where there are even attempts being made on them. We have to uh, correct that. Uh, th that is a serious threat to our country, as, you know, as some of the other things we we've seen uh, over the last year or more. Uh, but 
You know, one of the reasons that my father was disturbed by Roe v. Wade was that he thought that the court had improperly uh, thrust itself into policy decisions that belonged to the American people. And I think he would not have been surprised, actually, that when the court pulled away and said, we're going to get out of the business of uh, uh, policing abortion rights and, and put it back to the American people, I think he would have expected that uh, there would be some people who would uh, re react to that. And, um, and, you know, I think w where we should be headed is back to the American people making these decisions. And, uh, you know, when uh, American people take on new uh, responsibilities, sure, I think there will be some excitement marching the like initially. Uh, but my hope is, uh, his hope would have been that it, uh, we return it to the political process and the courts are less involved going forward. Indeed. And that is indeed where we're going. Uh, Eugene Scalia, so good seeing you again. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Neil.